So I'm gonna just get started. So the question that I was asking on this particular live is, does diet really matter? Does diet really, really matter? That's the question. And I wanna know y'all thoughts. Hi, Jermaine Robinson. I wanna know y'all thoughts about diet. Do you think, do you think only people that have, um, you know, a vegan lifestyle is, is only the conscious people? Do you really think that? Do you think that only certain people can tap in based upon what they're eating? Is that your thoughts? Are those your thoughts? Like, okay, if I don't eat right, I'm not gonna be able to hear from Source Energy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop all of my manifestations from coming. Do you believe that? What are your beliefs? What are your beliefs, Willie? What are your beliefs, Jermaine? Because I wanna share, I wanna share my thoughts, my thoughts as I've been going along my journey. Hi, God. Oh, hey, God's herbs here. I've been seeing your uh, TikToks. I like them. You the perfect person to even answer this question. But I know you, you're going to be answering from your own perspective of where you are in your journey. But please give me your feedback and let me know. Do you think, do you think it diet is it? Do you think just those that have a good diet can tap into source energy. I really would love to hear your 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 thoughts, God's God's herbs, because I be seeing you in your garden, <laughs> vibrating high and all. I used to go and do the same thing. So I have heard that eating high vibrational live foods can help, but there is probably more to it. Thank you. Thank you. So you okay? Jermaine says that they've heard that and God's herb says diet and spirit. Okay. So y'all realize that we are all God's experience in itself, right? And so we all vibrating at different frequencies, right? And so are you cooking something good? And can I have the recipe? <laughs> Forbes. I'm about to actually juice these fruits while I'm on my little break between uh, my little workout sessions. So we all vibrate at different frequencies, right? And so, okay, so you, God, with God experiencing itself, God has to know. So God has to set a foundation of a new belief. So you all, you know, us, well, collectively, when we start to be inquisitive about our spiritual journey and wanting to evolve, we soak up all kind of information, right? We soak up the information, but we don't know just yet. Because knowing is when you've been through that experience and experienced it yourself till you get to the doing state of being, right? So it's just like those people who maybe have a near-death experience. After they have a near-death experience, let's say that they didn't believe in Jesus, in religion, right? They just was like um, an atheist person. But being that they had a near-death experience for themselves, now they they uh, program has been reset to a new belief based upon what it is they saw, whether it was Jesus they saw, Buddha they saw in this near-death experience. It made them come back in physical form and change the way that they look at, right? They, they look at things, right? So it's no different when we're talking about eating. <laughs> You go through this journey of evolving and then you realize once you, through consciousness, tap into the superconscious mind, you begin to realize that, wait, hold up. It was really me. I, it was my thinking that I had when I looked at certain foods. It was my resistance that I had when I was on the diet that gave the energy to the food to make it work for me or against me. So at the end of the day, it was always my thoughts. So with this different, going to different states of being, you realize it. So when you get to this state of being, just like the near-death experience, it's like you go back in and then you can eat anything at free will and nothing shall by any means harm you. Why? 
because you reprogram your thought or your belief. So really, at the end of the day, it is your belief toward the food. It's really your faith in the herbs that you believe at part of the matrix, that the matrix coded that particular herb to be at a high frequency, and you believe that. You believe that, so when you consume that, it heals you in the manner that you thought it up to heal you. But here's the thing. We are energetic beings. So even if our food was vibrating at a low frequency, we should have enough power if we are tapped into this state of being to energetically bring that energy of that food higher. Let's say, for example, it was a GMO fruit. And I know that it was a GMO fruit because it didn't have any seeds in it. I know this before I consume it. And because I know before I consume this thing, I'm going to be like, uh, in my mind, well, it might not be as powerful as, the, you know, the seeded papaya. Well, did I just make waste my money? I hope it do what it's supposed to. So I'm thinking that already, energetically, already. Right. So energetically, my thoughts, my cells of my body here my, or inside of me, they they vibing for every thought that I had. And so when I consume it, so shall it be because thoughts create things. So so shall it be. If this was a seedless papaya, it would not be as beneficial as the seeded one for me, because that's what I thought it up to be like. So it's really not the diet. It's the thoughts of the things that we're consuming. <laughs> yes, our thoughts manifest everything. It's the thing that's creating our reality. But it just so happened that conscious people, they went through eating maybe, they experienced the totality of God on both sides. Maybe they started off eating kind of like, you know, low frequency foods per se, like animals or whatever. And then they evolved and then maybe they evolved all the way to becoming a vegan. And after they had their experience, that's when they could gather up the information from eating the low frequency stuff to the high frequency stuff. And they gather and they come to the conclusion, a new belief or a new program that, you know what? It really don't matter what I eat. It's my thoughts. Like I'm what I'm eating. So when you have somebody that's like a Dalton Thomas along the journey, that's like, oh, no, I, I, can't, I can't follow you on that one. It's basically because they've never experienced both sides of it yet. Right? And so they want to tell you what you can't do. They want to give you your limited thoughts of thinking. It's like, no, you got to eat this. No, you don't have to do anything but reprogram your subconscious mind. Once you penetrate to reprogram the subconscious mind, anything will work for you. Just like how, you know, like they'll say, you know, melanin popping, so to speak. And, you know, I'm on a high frequency. I'm lit. So if we pop in so much, if our energy is popping so much, really and truly, it don't matter if you... Um, a lighter hued being or a darker hued being if your melanin your carbon based structure is popping so much you should have enough energy we should have enough energy to be able to heal people around us with <laughs> if we really really pop in you see what i'm saying and that's a thought process and that's based upon you experiencing yourself and so if you pay attention to like the buddhist monks of the world you know, you pay attention to, you know, the gurus, gurus or whatever. These people in the physical reality, some of them don't eat at all. Some of them eat rice. Now, if you know anything about food, if you've been through your journey, you know, evolving, you know that in the matrix, we look at white, uh, white rice as being plastic, like not having no minerals, void of its life force. So why would it? This is an interesting question. Why would a Buddhist monk sits there and only eats, eat rice. <laughs> only eat rice that's void of its substance. Hey, how you doing? Mosaic? Sue, is that how you say that? Yeah, yeah. That was me two years ago. I'm newly aware and a life student. Yeah, that's a be beautiful, babe. Because it's a journey. You ain't gonna never, you gonna forever be a student. It's a journey. So why, if you just think about that, just the question of why would a Buddhist monk sit there and eat white rice if it's all about diet? Why would the Christ conscious one, if you come from religion, why would he, in the new contract, 
Now, I'm not talking about the old contract when they told you don't, don't mess with the pork and all. But when the new contract came, when, when we shifted to the subconscious mind, why would the price conscious one say, just bless your food? Huh? You know, that love heals all. You know? Why would he say things, even whatsoever things that are just, that are pure, that are good rapport, if they have any virtue, and them think on these things? Because those are the same type of thoughts that you should have or we should have when we're eating, no matter what it is that we are eating, that it is a life force, that it is electrified. That you bless it for it to work for you instead of against you and say, oh, this is just a little GMO here. I ain't gonna get more, no life force out of here. Oh, this is, this is my, this is killing me softly. Or, oh, this ice cream gonna put pounds on me. Yeah. So, Diet is not based upon where I am in my journey. It's not the all the healer. It's my thoughts. And I don't know if you're there just yet, but I've been through the herbs. I have a whole book on herbs. I've done my research personally. I've sat down with myself and I healed myself. But now that I'm on the other side of seeing myself at my low and seeing myself at my high, it was me. It was my thoughts. It was my belief that this dandelion was going to cleanse my liver. It was my belief that this cilantro, it would be able to get rid of mercury and lead, right? It was my belief that holy basil was great for anti, as an antidepressant, right? It was my belief that cherries had melatonin inside of them and they were able to help me to get a good night of sleep. It was my belief toward that. It wasn't the cherry. It wasn't the dandelion. No, no, no. It wasn't the holy basil. It was me being in alignment with me and having a new thought. And my thought, which is energy, was a force and it went out and it came back in my, my voice. My word, it cannot come back to me void. <laughs> it cannot come back to me void. So I came on just a couple of minutes because I came here to do my little smooth, um, juice right quick to tell you that it is not just diet, but, it, but I have a choice. And, 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 and I, don't, I don't have to eat this if I don't want to, but I just like it. You get to a point where you've experienced your all, but you just like a certain way based upon how it makes you feel, based upon how you make you feel. Because if you really and truly was a master manifester at low frequency, we could sit there and we can eat cookies with the, all of the feeling and eat some popcorn and drink all the sodas that we want. But it's inside of our mind and we're sitting there, if our subconscious mind believes it, it is law. So inside of our subconscious mind, if our subconscious thought is saying that this cookie is healing me, that this cookie is blessed, that this cookie is giving me minerals, that this ice cream is electrifying my body. If our subconscious mind believed that, we would not be getting overweight we will not be experiencing this ease so your physical reality is going to show you what your beliefs are so if you get a little sick whatever behind some kind of food or something it is not the food it is you and your belief toward that food it is you and your, it's always you no matter what we're talking about it's you but with that in mind I eat what I want to eat if you've been following me, you'll know that I started off my page talking about health and wellness and I was teaching about herbs and I was talking about, you know, erectile dysfunction and yeast infections and, and, um, and uh, halitosis and acne and all kinds of different things that I shared on my page as it pertained to health and wellness. And I even have a website that sells things in alignment with herbs and I think it's so beautiful. But if you notice, I don't talk about those things because now I understand the totality of it all, that all is God. All is God experiencing itself and it is, and it, God can't get it wrong because God is constantly creating through God's thoughts. That's why God needs to let a new mind be in them if God wants to change its physical reality. Point blank, period. That is law. That's the law we govern underneath in this particular matrix, like it or not, but it's working. Abide by it or not, but it's working. Your physical reality is with your thoughts. You thought it up. It's working. 
So if you sitting up there and you going to the doctor and you buying stuff and you doubt that the pill going to work and the doctor is just putting you through to run around, you might as well save your money, your energy, your time, however you look at it. Because as a man think it, so is he. If you don't think that next round of pills going to work for you, don't. Don't even swallow that thing. But if you if you so find something in your physical reality that, that you want to give your belief to. So if the pill, if you have the doubt for it, go for the herb. Since you don't doubt the herb. Go on your journey. And after you get past the herb or the vegan lifestyle, you can look back at yourself and you then you're going to know this to be true. Dang, it was my thoughts. It was my thoughts. Because I doubted that pill was going to work. I doubt it. I doubt it. I paid attention to the fact that I was fat. I paid attention to the fact that my stomach was poking out. I paid attention to the fact that I wasn't going to the bathroom as much as I thought I should. I paid attention to the negative thing, the negative aspect of what wasn't working. All I had to do was change my thinking. All I had to do was change my thinking to my body being in a healthy state of being. That's what it was. But in between those two thoughts, you ran to the herb, you ran to the, the conscious person, you ran to consultations, you ran to that. But it was you all the time. And it was a simple fix from thinking this negative unto this positive. That's, that's the fix. Because you're manipulating all the energy around you once you make the fix. Even if you don't make the fix and you stay on the negative state of being and constantly think what you're thinking, you're still manipulating energy around you because you're getting more of that negative stuff that you're thinking. You're God, no matter what state of being you are, positive or negative. But God wants to experience all, just like a battery. You, you don't find no battery. There's no battery that don't have a negative and a positive end to it. You're God. Energy in motion, experiencing itself. So you're going to have highs, you're going to have lows. You just decide which side of that battery that you're going to operate on. You decide after you experienced it all, though. After you experienced the negative. And then went over to the positive. Then sit back and look at the big picture and realize, God damn, I could never get it wrong. <laughs> it's a beautiful place to be. Yeah. If I could get by with only eating when hungry, less poison would be in the body. Poisoning and distraction. Who is that? Okay, Rene. Okay. So, here's the thing. If you if we believe that there is poison to get in the body, then we set a state of being in our mental that we maybe need to be cautious of the poison so they don't get in the body. You see? And if you decide, it's just a thought switch. If you decide that I'm going to only eat one time a day, then so shall it be. Because our thoughts should be running the body or the avatar, not the other way around. So that's really just you changing your mind. I'm, I'm just eating every day. And, and regardless of what I eat, I'm going to bless my food. And I'm going to be all right. And all is well with, will be with me because nothing shall by no means harm me. Because my mental is up to par. Or you can spend a couple of years because God has to experience itself. So then you can spend a couple of years. I'm going to tell you how, how, how I spent a couple of years. I spent a couple of years and I paid attention to the, the um, PLU numbers on the food. And so I wanted to get the organic food only and not the non-organic non because it was grew somewhere that I didn't know where it was supposed to be growing at and I needed the ones with the nine and then so I had to get the seeded one instead of the seedless one and and then I had to get the I went through a phase that oh I have to get the alkaline water and then I got to get this here and I got to have my coconut oil and I got to do this now mind you some of these things I still do but even in on my journey of 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 of, of, of like water for example I begin to think after I, I had been through when I was a little girl, I ate, the, I drank the tap water, the whole pipe water when we was outside, and, and ain't nothing happened to me then. And so I started thinking about it. So I've been through the tap water days, and then I went to evolve to the bottled water days, and and then I evolved to the to the alkaline water days, and then I started thinking about it. Well, why needs my water? Why my water gotta be this here high? 
You know, and I, then I started thinking, just logically thinking, well, I have a swimming pool, and it be, it has to be in balance roughly in the middle, about 7.0, you know, 7.3 right there. But why am I drinking water to the 9 point something? You know, it don't make no sense because my stomach has an internal GPS, a buffer, where it has to buff this down. I'm overworking my stomach to buff it down from 9 to the 7. Why am I doing this here? So logically, I thought about that, and then I stepped back and I, I looked at the totality because God wants to experience all. And then I decided, you know what? 7.0 spring waters is just good enough for me. I believe that I'm, I'm in a safe place. And so this became a new law for me. And so now I didn't have to go outside of me every time I saw these different water bottles out in the grocery store. And go, oh, let me try this one. This one came from the so, so, so mountains. It must be real pure. No. No. After you go through this, you have your experience and you decide where you want to be or what you want to vibrate at and you be it. Because life will bring you on a spiral, a spiral, a spiral. You'll be constantly going down different rabbit holes. There are so many rabbit holes. You spend all of your eternity just exploring rabbit holes, rabbit holes, and rabbit holes, and rabbit holes as far as it, per as it pertains just to eating. And that's just one rabbit hole. With many, many slots for you to go down. Just with diet. You ain't even get to consciousness thinking and being still with your body. You ain't even get to the money. You ain't even get to relationship portals. Because you're spending all of the time wondering how the diet is going to be. Running away, creating resistance from the poisons out there. The poison water and stuff like that. When you could simply just change your mind and say, this is the one for me. And believe in that one. And when you see the one that you don't think, you know, is, is the perfect water in your world, you just bless it and you, you look at it and say, that's God experiencing itself. That's God too. Just vibrating at a different frequency and you don't be afraid of it is what I'm saying. Because that fear is going to create poison in it. And then let's say, for example, your favorite water ain't available and you got to drink that one there. Now you, you had a, you're afraid already of the poison in it. Now you got to drink it. And now, as a man, thank you so much eating. Now, now, now you got poison in your body. <laughs> so when, 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 when will it end? You know? When, when will it end? You're going to find all kinds of um, super fruits. Super foods in a physical reality. When, which one going to be super enough? <laughs> which one is it going to take for you to change your mind is what it is. That's what it is, because even, even if you're not even into taking care of your diet, if we're talking about in the medical industry, the doctor, you, you, if you sit in the waiting room long enough, you'll see all of those salesmen coming in trying to introduce a new pill for the doctor to, to, to give to the patient. Which pill is it going to be? How many milligrams is it going to take for you to change your mind? God? How many high blood pressure medications you're going to have to be on for you to renew your mind, God. And say, I'm healed, God. I believe in this thing right here. I'm going to use this thing here to believe in and I'm going to digest this thing right here and I'm going to use this to help my right now kind of faith. But really, it's just going to be me changing my mind. Ain't that rock ain't healing you, God. You healing you. It's always you healing you. But some gods got to go through different pre uh, prescriptions. But they, they, even some of them got to go to different doctors because that doctor didn't assess the situation good enough. Oh, I, didn't, I don't like how he handled it. He didn't do enough blood work for me. I didn't like his attitude. So I'm going to go to another doctor. Oh, now I like this doctor. Yeah, this doctor here, this doctor knows what he's talking about or she's talking about. So she's not going to give me a pill. Oh, the pill that she gives me now is a better pill. Whatever it takes. But baby, it is not the doctor. It is not the pill. It is you changing your mind. <laughs> it is you letting a new mind be in you. It is not the, it's not the dandelion. It's not the sour sap. I've been there. I really was passionate. I'm always passionate. But I really was passionate when I was in that place. Researching dandelion, yellow dot, sour sap, the high... The high fructose corn syrup, the uh, malt dextrin, the, the dyes and stuff that they put in the food. And, and I'm like, oh, I got to avoid that one. Oh, I got to avoid that one. I got to I gotta stick to this one. Yes, I want this one. Baby, all is God. 
if you want to exhale and, and, and save some of the years, <laughs> some of the energy, you work on your mental while you're eating today. And you will say to the seeded or seedless fruit that you, you're good to me. I have a relationship with you. And the relationship that we have together <laughs> is that you go, there's life in you and you transferring life inside of me. And if you are seedless, the life that you don't have, my energy is powerful enough to transform life into you. So you cannot harm me. It's not the food, I promise you. It's your mind. When you change your mind, you change everything. Renew your mind, baby. Renew your mind. <laughs> Let me see. Let's see. It's always you healing you. Indeed, I love and appreciate you so very much. Hey, Jess, I ain't seen you in a while. Hey, love speaks. Thank you for being here. Yeah, definitely. It's not the food. It's you. Stop outsourcing your energy to everything else. Everything else. You done did that already in religion when you believed in Jesus and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And maybe you believed in Buddha, Krishna, Thor, and all of these energies. Maybe he was even, even a goddess of Shun. All of those are beautiful. No disrespect for any of those. But it was you. It was your belief that you gave to that entity that made it so special. It's time in our journey to take out the middle man and go to the source. It is time in our journey to, to take out the middleman, whether it be the diet, and go to the source. It is time in our journey to take out the middleman of disbelief and go to the source. <laughs> this is the source. This is the source. Even when I was working out today, it, it wasn't about me being in the, in the gym. You know, it wasn't about the weights. It was about me going to the source. It was about me saying, I see you muscles growing. I see. I command you to grow. <laughs> I command you to form. I, I command you to shape. It's about what you're thinking. Whenever it, you're doing, whatever it is that you're doing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Kiki, thank you for being here, Kiki. I appreciate you. Yeah, welcome to live. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Third eye connects to the source. Yes, it does. And if our eye be single, our body should be full of light. Is your body full of light? How you gonna say your body full of light when you when you scared to, to, to eat something else that's seated? Me still and all. It had to have some of the substance of the source to even be created, even if it was in the lab. So we know that the seeded ones, you know, we, the seeded ones came from the lab, you know, and they would call it man made and all this and that. But it had to have substance from the source to be created. So it had to have a little bit of juice, or you couldn't see it. It had to be vibrating on a, a lower frequency, or you being God wouldn't be able to experience it because God is all. And in this illusion of separation, you might think it's low frequency energy or you might think this is high frequency energy, but at the end of the day, it was just God experiencing itself because all is God. One faith, one God, one baptism, whether it is high or low, whether it is white or black, whether it is seedless or seeded, all is God whether it is fruits or vegetables, it doesn't matter. What matters is what you're thinking about when you're looking upon that thing. Cause so shall that subconscious thought be. Nothing else, nothing else. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, that's my rant that I'm gonna put on my, um, my YouTube channel. And I'm about to uh, juice me some stuff. Man, y'all, I feel so good. I feel so good. I hope y'all feel good. I've been walking around in physical reality, and people have been asking me, you know, how I'm feeling and how my day is, and this and that and the third. And I've been saying for the longest, yeah, I'm perfect. Everything's just so perfect. And boy, as a man thinking so is he, I feel perfect. 
Man, do you feel perfect? Is everything in your life just perfect? It gotta be perfect because you thought it up. And it's perfectly flowing energetically just like you thought it up. Life is perfect, y'all. Life is perfect. Thank you so much, um, Lawrence, for my little juicer. Because I've been juicing. I eat what I want, but I've been juicing because I've been working out and, and trying um, not to, I guess, chew as much. But what I've been doing is I'll juice. I'll juice in the evening. I'll drink my liquid of my juice. And then in the morning, I eat my pulp from my juice because my pulp have all of the fiber in it. And then in between, I just do whatever I want to do and, you know, flush out with water, eat whatever I want to eat or whatever. But all is God. And I'm experiencing that in my thoughts. I'm experiencing that in my diet. I'm experiencing that in all of my manifestations. Because you see how they talk about in uh, manifestations, they talk about resistance. That resistance is equivalent to that fear that we have of the so-called poisonous food, for example, like, right? Once we create the resistance, we have to destroy it because we're the ones that created it. So once we create it, we destroy it by taking our attention off of it and realizing that, you know what, I can't get this day wrong. And even if I don't get this manifestation, I'm still perfect. It will never, ever, 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 ever come. This is, this is, this is equivalent to surrender. And this is equivalent to not holding on to the outcome of something. If that thing don't never, ever, ever come, I'm good. <laughs> and you got to mean that. And so that, when you, when you surrender to that point, man, if I, don't, if I don't never get it, I'm good. When you get to that place in your manifestation, that thing gonna come to you. That thing gonna smack you on the side of your head. Because let me tell you, when I was in my lowest point, I didn't even realize I was doing this. When I was in my lowest point of being, when I was so-called catching common colds and, you know, uh, bloated, had irritable bowel, when I used to wear my glasses, when I used to be bigger, you know, larger in size. I surrendered one day and I didn't even know what I was doing. This is how I stumbled on understanding this in hindsight. I said one night, to live is to die. Because I was just tired. I was drained. I thought I was going to die or something like right? And I kissed my, my babies. They were babies. My boys, they were babies at that time. I kissed them and I told them to take care of each other. Because I just thought I was just going to die. I was so fatigued after just going to work. I would sit in the garage and, you know, for the, for the longest and just be like, oh, I made it home. And I'd just be good for really nothing but just to make something to eat. And then I was done for the night. I didn't know what was going on. And the doctors was trying to give me all kind of different pills for this and pills for that. Nobody ain't never had asked me about mental. Nobody ain't never asked me about the diet at the time because I could have used the diet to tap into my mental at the time. Nobody asked me about that. So I gave up on that. I stopped going to the doctor and I just was like, you know, look, to live to die. God darn it. Look, I'm about to be out. <laughs> and that was me surrendering. That was me surrendering. I said, I was in religion at that time. So I was like, to live is to die. Let thy will be done. And I lay down in the bed, you know, because the night before, it, my heart was beating fast and I felt like death was upon me. Like, man, I lay down in that bed. I didn't even care. And then the next day when I woke up, I was like, oh, I'm still here. I'm still here in the physical reality. Okay, well, let me try to do something different. Let me try to at least teach my children, you know, about a different way of doing their diet. And every, my will to live was based upon my children. My reason why was based upon my children. And so every day I would introduce them into a new fruit or new vegetable, new something. And so, like, weeks was passing, and I was gaining strength. I didn't even understand what was going on. I was gaining strength, and I was like, oh, so I guess I ain't about to die. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I released the resistance. I experienced, it was just me, God, experiencing one side of the dynamic. And all God had to do was change its mind in order to flip to the other side of it. I had already experienced the sickness as it pertained to the so-called foods that I thought. But it wasn't the food. It was me changing my mind. Released the resistance if, you know, that I wasn't going to die or pass, whatever. So once I changed my mind, I began to think, oh, oh, it was the food. No, I used the food as that, that, that physical thing to help me get on the other side with my thinking. But it was always me. It was always my thoughts that did that. And it's always your thoughts. It's always your thoughts. Because <laughs> I'm that person that realized this because of my journey. I've always been willing to take one for the team. I was willing to take one for the team and then just tap out in physical reality. And didn't even care 
as far as health and wellness was concerned, I was always ready to take one for the team as far as spirituality was concerned because I needed to know what this damn devil was all about. I needed to be the backslider. I needed to be the person that got sick so I could be in a better position to help people like you, to help my reflections. And so it was not anything outside of me. It was always me changing my mind. Every video that you ever see me talking to you on is always going to be about you changing your mind. We could change the titles up in here, but it's always going to be you because life happens through you because you are the universe. The universe is within you as within, so without. Once you change your mind, then all of this got to change. Like, God damn, how this got out of here? Oh, I'm about to change my mind. <laughs> That's how that thing go. Yeah, Trey, we back. I was coming home to do a, um, a smoothie right quick. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. I read a book, Heal Your Body. Oh, Louise Hay, I remember her in my journey. It's a direct relation to as you think, so are you. Yep, yep, yep. I love it. Hey, one million hustles. I like that. Yeah, Dre, I came back. I came over to, um, to do a smoothie on my break between class, and I started running my mouth. As a man, thank you, so is he. Yes. So that's the message. That's what I wanted to share with y'all. Change your mind. Change your mind, babe. You want to change your mind. It don't matter if I put a hamburger up in this darn juicer. If I believe that that hamburger got minerals in it and has life force in it, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. That's why I don't talk about that no more. That's why I eat what I want. When I won't, how I won't. <laughs> we all gonna figure it out. We all have our own appointed time to figure that thing out. But it's beautiful. The journey is beautiful. Hello, Val boys. Thank you for the message. It was received. Yeah, yeah. I know we love we lo we love our little favorite little things. Cause I love sour sour. I love, Lord, I love dandelion. Yeah, I love all that good stuff. I love burdock. I love all of that. I, I love my seeded. But baby, it's me. <laughs> it's me. And you, we all collectively should take our journey serious like that. This, man, it's me. It's me. I'm running this show. And once you begin to get confident in knowing that, then it's like, oh, all your superpowers. <laughs> all of your, your your creative ability, all of that good stuff that we all want to manifest, all of that come forward because we like we become like invincible. We be just like on that movie, the um, the Matrix, Neo, when 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 um at the end when he decided that he was the one, he had to make that mental switch regardless of what the or oracle told him, regardless of what she said. She was like, no, nah, I, I don't think you're the one. No. You, you got to let the new mind be in you and you just take ownership of being the one. It's your state of being and you decide who you want to be. You want to be the one or you don't want to be the one. You want the people to be the one? Well, go on and let the people be the one. You want the doctor to be the one? Let the doctor be the one. But when you really stop being afraid of your own power, then you realize, oh, wait, wait, I'm the one. <laughs> Oh, I've been running this show all by myself. It's like we got little training wheels on in our journey. Yeah, we be having training wheels on because we be scared, scared to ride that bike all by ourselves. But when we evolve to a higher state of being consciously, we take them training wheels off. Yeah, we'll take it off and then we go ride that bike. We'll go ride that bike and we'll, we'll be like, look, Look, I'm doing it all by myself. We'll come on TikTok to tell other people, look, look, I'm doing it by myself, so I know you can do it by yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's how that thing go. That's how that thing go. Nice to meet you. Same here, babe. Same here. So I'm just throwing stuff up in here just to have me something to drink before I go and work out some more. I'm going, um, what do they call it? I'm going to yoga tonight. I'm going to go. Yeah, they got a yoga class that I want to take. But I came home to just get some, um, some 
some fresh juice from my new juicer that I'm really excited about. I put some cantaloupe, some papaya, I'm about to do mango, and uh, oranges. Yeah, just to have something to drink because it's really, really, it'd be really, really be hot out here. And I just like to stay hydrated because I don't want to pass out. Wait, somebody was trying to, somebody was trying to come on live. Yeah, I am going to enjoy my yoga session. I haven't done yoga in a long time. So I'm really excited about it. Whoever that was, I'm sorry. I just saw you go away. I did, I had my eyes down. If you want to come back up here, you can. I'm looking now. <laughs> Somebody asked to come in. I never did that before. I don't know how they work. But we could try it today. I got a couple of minutes. I don't know how this moody going to taste. But we about to see. So how y'all manifestations going? How y'all diets going? Y'all mental diet? Because all is mental, all is God. No ziplining yet? No. <laughs> I haven't found a place to zipline. You remember that, huh? Huh, Jay? That's beautiful. I ain't found a place yet. No, but I found a place to work out and swim and, and hang out. They got all kind of classes. They got cycling classes and stuff. I think that's pretty cool. I think I could stay there pretty much all day, but I, I'm not gonna be able to do all of this, <laughs> to do this here, you know, as many times as I do because I'm about to open up my website on the first. So y'all look out for my my um, products that I'm gonna be launching. I sell detoxes, I sell lotions, soaps, natural hair care, you know. So that's gonna be coming out on the first, so I'm not gonna be able to be in all of these classes. But while I have a little time, I'm about to get in every class I can get in. I tried to get in cycling today, but it was booked already. Yeah, I want some soaps. Yeah, it's a journey. I have days that I'm good, some days I feel blah. Yeah, and it's gonna be like that. It ain't nothing wrong with that. Be okay with that. Some people tell you, you know, get up and no, 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 no. But it's okay. It's really okay. It's really okay to feel however it is that you feel. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Be easy on yourself. And don't let them, them people that's just trying to vibe all high all the time. Don't let, don't, don't let what the people say penetrate inside of you. Life happens through you. And if God needs to take a break, because it's a lot sometimes, it's a lot. It's a lot of realms, a lot of exploring, a lot of unfolding of self that God is doing. A lot of experiencing of self that God is doing. Experience it. Experience it. I'm cleansing it daily. My energy kicked up when I came here. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. And, that's, and that goes to show how, like, our energy is transformable, trans, um, formable, you know? Like, one person could be low, just like if you're on the phone with somebody who's tired. You're on the phone with somebody tired and they start yawning, then the next thing you know, you're yawning. So, so it's, really, it's really cool when we can find things that are like energy when we seemingly think that we're low. But even if you can't find something like that outside of you, you got to use your mind to tap into that inside of you so you can get more of it, you know, to use your thinking and begin to just think of another thought. Even if that thought has to put you on a beach somewhere, on a vacation somewhere, you know, imagining that you're sitting there in, in, on a beach, you know, just lounging underneath the sun and you could hear the water, you know, the ocean waves or whatever it is. Your mind can take you anywhere that you want it to go. You tell it where you want it to go. Because you're the driving force. You're the driving force. Now let me see how this thing going to taste. I don't know because I just put all kind of stuff in here. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. 
Okay, so I got, I have berries, strawberries, cantaloupe, dandelion, papaya. Wait, let me get a straw. I don't know. I just be, y'all know I'm a voila, voila kind of cook. <laughs> this is me cooking right here. I'm a voila kind of cook. Whatever I got to do to fix it, I'll fix it later, let's see. Wah wah! This gonna be my juice on my break. Let's see. Let's see how it tastes. Wait, my straw have a hole in it. My straw have a hole in it, but this thing got potential. I didn't want no heavy banana. Okay, I like it just like it is. The strawberries are really good inside of it. So that's strawberries, blueberries, papaya, cantaloupe, a little a tiny bit of uh, dandelion, and mango. That's what it, oh, it must be the mango. It must be the mango that made it sweet. It tastes really good. <laughs> no, I haven't started manifesting yet. The concept is very new to me. I don't know where to begin. Well, you have started manifesting already. You manifested me on this live. You manifest everything that you have in your physical reality. You've always been a manifester. Now you might not have always been successful at manifesting everything it is that you want, but you are manifesting thought by thought. You thought about something today, you manifest it. Even that's why it's so important that you pay attention to the people that you follow, that's on your feed, and, and not paying attention to them, but paying attention to your thoughts when it pertains to them. Like, like say for example, if I was walking down the street and I saw somebody that looked suspicious, if I was to say or have a thought of, oh, he looks scary, he looks like he'll hurt somebody. Right? That thought is manifesting more of that thought. Asking you shall receive. So then I'll have or see an experience with someone getting hurt. You're writing the screenplay of your physical reality with your habitual thoughts. Not necessarily with the ones that you're speaking out of your mouth. It's the silent ones that you're thinking all day long. That thought that you're thinking all day long, like, oh, it looks, this looks like a scary place or Oh, I'm happy. I feel good. I feel like today could be a good day. If you think that thought, it comes. Whether good or bad, it's you manifesting, creating. Thought by thought by thought, it's all you. I say, your insides is going to be happy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they was happy already, but they're going to they gonna be happier, I guess, huh? <laughs> yeah. No ice. Oh, yeah, you told me about that last time. But... But, you know what? I do have a bag. I was about to say, like, my, my refrigerator. I do. I did buy a little bag. Because my refrigerator knew it. They told me to wait. Wait to not use the ice. Until something, I don't know. Two gallons of ice not got to come out before, you know, before I use it. Because it's new and you got to go through the filtering process or something, I don't know. It's not good ice, that's what they say. <laughs> so I bought me a bag. I bought me a bag. Yeah, thank you for reminding me that. Cause it's hot as I don't know what out here. <laughs> Happy you're here. Oh, Kiki. Thank you, oh my God, thank you. I really have to watch that I fixated on. I overthink a lot. Yeah, but you know what? The beautiful thing about overthinkers, we are master manifestors. Boy, because I I'm I'm an overthinker, but I learn how to tweak that. Well, I overthink now for the things that work for me. You know? Used to overthink for 
oh, did I do this? Just how, I wonder how this gonna work. I wonder if the back door shut. I wonder if so and so, right? Let me call so, let me do this here. No, I gotta do this here. You know, just thinking, thinking, thinking about the things that I gotta do, the things that I was worried about, so to speak. But what I've learned along the journey, those overthinkers, master manufacturers, masters. Once you get a, a handle on it, per se, you know, like guiding that steering wheel to stay in one lane with it. And the lane that you want to stay in is joy. The lane you want to stay in is feeling good, always on purpose. The lane you want to stay in is seeing things through the eyes of God. Once you get steady driving in that lane, Baby, your overthinking mind gonna give you the desires of your heart. Your overthinking mind gonna overthink up. Oh, you done overthought some peace. You done overthought some love. You done overthought some abundance. Oh yeah, overthinking is a beautiful thing. Don't don't look at it as a negative thing, cause I'm an overthinker. And look how I done thought myself over into another state. I done thought myself over into retirement. I done thought myself over into having my time again, which is my real currency. Oh yeah. Girl, you better get to keep on thinking. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, it's full, full, full. <laughs> yeah, for real. Oh, look at Gina. Hey, Gina. How you doing, babe? Hi, you press. Thanks for being here. Yeah, that's how that thing works. Overthinkers, that's, that's you, babe. You're a master manifester. You're telling on yourself. You're telling us how, how much of a superpower energy you have by being an overthinker. That's all you're doing with me. Because, baby, been there. Thought wrong. Changed my mind. And here I go. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Four, four, four. What do you get out of the four, four, four? What is your belief by four, four, four? I see two of y'all saying that. The numerology, and and even that is thought. Even that is thought. If you think about it, you gave it a meaning that works for you, that makes you feel excited about it. And nothing is wrong with it. But I was just asking, what do you get out of your four four four? What does that mean to you? What is your belief? Why does it make you want to type it? Why does it make you happy about it? <laughs> Yeah, hey Dina, thank you for being here, babe. Let's see, Stefan, I'm not on your page by mistake. I need your positivity. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I have it to give. I'm so happy I have it to give my overflow. Now, you can't take all what's in my cup, but I'll give you all of my overflow. My cup run it over. <laughs> and you use that overflow to fill up your cup so it could be running over. And it's like a domino effect. And that's really the natural state of being that we're all supposed to be in. Cup running over with goodness and mercy, right? With love and joy. Breaks down to a seven in my life path number. Oh, okay. Okay, I see your meaning. I see your meaning behind it. It means to me that we are in alignment in this moment. Okay, okay. Yeah, so thankful for your overflow. Yes, <laughs> I'm thankful for it too, Gina. Yes, Lord, because you know. Hmm. It's been a long journey for me. Gina, y'all, is one of my, my day ones from my YouTube channel when I first started, when I wasn't this transparent at all. She's seen my growth, and I'm so happy she's still here. Yes, Kiki. Yeah, definitely. Well, for me mind that I really give a lot of attention or energy to is the 1111. Yeah. When I was leaving uh, the gym today, it was 1111. It seemed like whenever I check the temperature here, it's 1111. But if that means it's 111 degrees, like, right? So that's the one that I really love. It's like, to me, it tells me that I'm on the right path. Like a portal is open and, you know, I'm just walking in it pretty much because I look at the 11s like columns like it's like the way is open for me and every time I see it I just be like oh thank you I know I know I know I'd be like excited like talking to the clock <laughs> or the you know or the temperature whatever numbers that correlate with all of the ones I'd be talking to it like yeah I know how do you know because I know <laughs> but that's a beautiful thing Anyway, I'm about to clean this mess here back up and get my butt back. I got, I got, I'm going to work out again some more. I'm going to go to some more classes. 
while I can, while I have this little downtime before I start making products again. So I'm going to enjoy my new gym. Y'all be blessed and create your reality. Change your mind whenever you get ready, God. Don't be afraid of your power up in here. This video was from my heart to yours, babe. Be blessed. Bye, Gina. Bye, Kiki.